everybody, it's time for our story again this week and this week I've chosen one of my favourite stories, The Sea of Tra Tranquility and it's all about space and I love this book because I really love the pictures in it so I hope you enjoy it too. Years ago there was a little boy who had the solar system on his bedroom wall. Late at night he'd lie in bed with Rabbit and they'd watch the planets spinning round the sun. Mars, the tiny space tomato, Saturn sitting in its frisbee rings, freezing Pluto turning slowly in the dark, Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, Venus, Mercury and Earth. But of all the weird worlds that whirled across his bedroom wall, his favourite was the moon, a small and bold and ordinary globe of rock that looped the loop its way through outer space. He leant across the windowsill at night and watched the moon slide up into the sky above the biscuit factory. He borrowed his dad's binoculars and gazed for hours at the empty deserts and the rocky mountains. And it made him feel dizzy, just to think that he was looking at another world 200,000 miles away. He got an atlas of the moon for Christmas and he read it like a storybook. He dreamed of going there of rocketing across the cold black miles and landing on the crumbly rock. He dreamed of visiting the craters in the Atlas. He dreamed of driving in a flat tired moon mobile across the Bay of Rainbows. He kept a scrapbook called The Journey to the Moon. Inside were photographs of rockets taking off from Cape Canaveral and astronauts in pumped up suits and fishbowl helmets floated in the zero gravity around their little metal rooms. He borrowed library books and read how astronauts had orbited the Earth and walked in space and how they'd flown around the moon itself. And every night he hoped and hoped that one day they would find a way to land and walk across the tiny world where he had dreamed of walking. And eventually, one cloudless night, they did. He couldn't sleep. Midnight had come and gone, but he was wide awake and standing at the window in his dressing gown because two astronauts were walking on the surface of the moon, 200,000 miles above his bedroom. There they are. At 3 a.m. he went downstairs and turned the television on and there they were on the flickery screen bouncing slowly through the dust in the sea of tranquillity, like giants in slow motion. He stayed awake all night and went to bed at dawn. The sun was coming up outside his window and the moon was fading fast. He fell asleep and in his dreams he walked with them. little boy was me. I'm older now. The solar system wall chart fell to pieces long ago and Rabbit, who is older too, no longer follows me around but sits beside my desk and watches while I work. Yet still on cloudless nights I sometimes sit beside my bedroom window staring at the tiny distant world. I think how cold and dark it is up there. No wind, no clouds, no streams, no sky just rocks and dust. I think how nothing ever moves year after year. And then I think of those two astronauts and how the prints they made with their big boots will still be there tonight, tomorrow night, and every night for millions of years to come. I hope you enjoyed our story all about space. Maybe you can find out a bit more about some of the planets in space too and send them in to us in the comments. I look forward to reading you a story again next week. Thank you.